prisons and factories like that as well. So thank you for letting me share my screen. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Vicki. <laughs> yes, we try to only send out like one a month. So yes, <laughs> thank you. All right, we're gonna start the competition. Take a look here. Uh, group one has one image. All right, one second. You should be able to see my screen now. Correct. Okay. All right, this is uh, group one. We have uh, one image. Egrets. Hey, So I like the creativity with this to be able to turn this into the creative, uh, you know, image that it is. Uh, I think the the original uh, the photograph of these wonderful little egrets makes for a nice subject matter. When it comes to uh, thinking about things at the edge of a frame, though, watch, watch about about things that are at the very edge of the frame and things that kind of merge a little bit. So I give this um, an eight because it is a group one, but it's one of these things of making sure that you do border patrol before you um, kind of have that final image that you decide to be able to crop, especially in this case where it was cropped to kind of a panoramic format. And your score was eight, correct? Yes. I will review this since this is the only image. It's going to be a, a HM. All right, here we go. Egrets, Karen Zeller, honorable mention. Congratulations, Karen. Congratulations. All right, we're on uh, group two here. We have uh, 11 images. So we need a first, second, third, and two HMs. Okay. Potting shed in oil paint. So I like the way that the sidewalk kind of leads you right up to the house in this case. We have a nice leading line leading you up to the house. But if again, you look around and kind of do that same border patrol that I mentioned in the last one, there's a lot of distracting white things. Our eyes are often drawn to these really bright white things. So I score this a seven. I think it's got a lot of potential for artists. But I think if you look at some of the things that are around the edges, especially the really bright driveway, um, those easily could be either cropped out or in this artist category really uh, painted out and it would really enhance this image. Searching for significance in oil. Eight. I love the solitude of this. I love the placement of the figure, the panoramic uh, cropping of this, the way that the um, water line is kind of taking up that one third and then this wonderful shadow kind of foreboding this and also kind of going out along with the solitude. I wish there was a little bit more contrast in here. And I think um, there was a little bit more contrast, especially in the sand, it would enhance the image. My lemons. Seven. 
I like the simplicity of this image, the way the lemons are uh, for, juxtaposed against the background. Um, I like the outlining that was done. But there are um, a few things, again, if you're doing that kind of same border patrol that I mentioned, we have a leaf that's kind of going off and being kind of clipped off a little bit. In general, you want to be careful of that. Also, where the two uh, lemons are kind of uh, merging together, the line is lost here. And in this particular category, you have a lot of discretion to be able to uh, paint and be able to put that back in. Bird portrait. Seven. I love the feathers and the detail, the way the maker has been able to kind of transform that into almost something that is embossed, but where the edges of it meet the um, the background. So like there's haloing up in this particular area and this area, um, there's a little bit that got lost in here. Um, be careful of those types of things. Um, also, sometimes when you do an effect, sometimes by reducing the opacity a little bit, and keeping that effect there, but kind of removing it from um, maybe 10 or 20% can actually enhance it. It's kind of like having spice and then kind of adding too much spice. And then again, that border patrol, there's that weird little globby thing over here on the edge. So do that border patrol before you kind of hit that final save or submit. Mood Indigo. Nine. There's a nice feeling about this image. I like the way your uh, eye can go from blossom to blossom to blossom. There's a wonderful busy busyness of this that in this particular case complements it. There was this kind of one dead space over here on the right. Um, again, being an artist category here, I would probably fill that in a little bit more. Um, this would make a great jigsaw puzzle as well. Highway to hell. Eight. Um, I love the repeating patterns in these cars here, um, the way they're kind of just going off into the, the distance here. Um, the maker has been able to add a really nice sky into this. Um, there's a lot of uh, foreground still that probably um, could be somehow or another um, enhanced. There's a lot of really bright spots over on the uh, right-hand side and on the left-hand side. And again, in this category, you're the artist, you have complete control over this. But overall, it has a really nice impact. Lighthouse and film. Nine. This is a very creative use um, of this technique. Um, the only suggestion I would have is perhaps take a little bit off of the bottom. There's a lot of water on there because you've got this great lighthouse and a great sky going on. And I like the uh, film sprockets on the sides. Sunset abstract in oil. Eight. This has a wonderful abstract feel to it. The colors, the way that it kind of flows. Um, we read left to right and the way this kind of comes in and just has these wonderful swirls to it. It really has a nice feel for it. Portland Light. Seven. I like the way the maker has juxtaposed the, uh, the, the kind of the... Uh, the, the, the line drawing of the lighthouse against this wonderful uh, patterned sky. But then when we get into the grasses, into the trees, it gets a little bit busy. And then there's a couple of like little strange things that are kind of in, in the, just kind of popping out a little bit. So I think if this image had just been the blue and the outline of the lighthouse, it would have scored a nine. But because of the busyness of the, of the foreground and that's kind of little weird things that are sticking out here, it kind of detracts a little bit from the overall impact of the image. Dogwood and fall. Seven. So this image has a lot of vibrant colors. Uh, the blues juxtaposed against the reds make for a real vibrancy. 
but your eye doesn't really have a place to be able to settle on or to be able to kind of go place to place. And then on the left hand side, there's kind of this orange strip that's a little bit out of place. So I would kind of crop that out and maybe tone it down a little bit. I almost see like little toucan birds going on over here. We can see, you know, the eye, the beak. Um, if the maker had kind of uh, been able to um, highlight that, maybe unsaturate a little bit of the rest of the image, it would have had um, a different uh, appeal to the viewer. Ghost of Seligman. Nine. This is very creative. Um, the maker has been able to uh, juxtapose this horse and these two figures that are over here in the in the jail. Um, has been able to uh, kind of uh, tell us a little bit of a story of what this might have been long ago. All right, we have uh, three nines, so we need a first, second, third out of those. I'll show you the thumbnails, and we can go through them. So the lighthouse would be first. The um, the the flowers would be third, and the ghost would be second. The mood, yes, this is third. This is third. Yep, and the ghost is second. This is second. Correct. And. Need you to drop one of these. Need two HMs. Need a three. Ooh. All right, we'll we'll make them all HMs. <laughs> That's a tough one. Phew. <laughs> they're just so different. They're all they're all really nice. I, I'm glad you're not making me choose. <laughs> All right, we're going to review this contest. Searching for significance in oil, Walter Blitz, honorable mention. Congratulations, Walter. Highway to Hell, Lou DeVico, honorable mention. Congratulations, Lou. Sunset Abstract and Oil, Walter Blitz, honorable mention. Congratulations again, Walter. Mood Indigo, Pat Patricia Curzel, third place. Congratulations, Pat. Ghost of Seligman, Lou DeVico, second place. Congratulations, Lou. All right, we're going to move on to uh, group three. We have 26 images here. Uh, so we need a first, second, third, and five HMs. You do who do. I give this a nine. Um, it's got a lot of impact to it. I like the color tones. Um, I like the way the maker has been able to apply the artistic effect to it. The only thing I would watch out for is again, that border patrol at the very edge, but very nicely done. Home sweet home. Seven. Um, I like the overall impact of this, um, but one is, is a lot to the image. So maybe <laughs> simplifying it a little bit um, and perhaps making it um, just a little bit more um, artistic. Can be the surfer. Eight. Uh, this is a fun image. I like the way the maker has applied the effect so that it's kind of different on the top of the image as it is to the uh, the water on the bottom of the image. Um, the hands on the left-hand side are a little bit tight to the edge of the frame, though. Willie. Eight. What a fun image. I love all the textures and the patterns and the little swirls that kind of lead you uh, throughout here. Um, there's a little bit of white up on the upper part. So again, watch your um, borders on there, but this is a very fun image. 
food for lovers. Seven. So I like the artistic effect that's been applied, especially to kind of the rose and the grapes. But there's a lot going on in this image. In general, um, simpler is a little bit better. There's also kind of a slope to this that makes me feel like the fruit is going to kind of just slide off of the plate. So be careful about perspective. View from Kentuck Knob, two. Eight. So a very uh, interesting scene as a photograph and the way the maker has applied the artistic effect to it really works well here. I would probably suggest taking off some off the bottom so that we can really get in close to uh, the tree and the house and the roads that are leading um, you, you throughout. And then be careful of, again, white areas. White areas are going to be something our eye is drawn to. And is that where you want the maker's eye to be able to be drawn to? Ghost Rider. Nine. What a fun image and the way that the treatment has been applied uh, to this image. The only thing I would suggest to do is just crop just a little bit off on the right hand side and get rid of that little uh, glob on the far right side. Gloria. Seven. I like the uh, way that the treatment has been applied to this person. I think it is uh, very artistically and, and well handled, but there's a lot going on in this image. Um, we have the fire alarm that could have easily been removed. We have a really bright window over here and a really bright window over here, and it just takes my eye away. I want to just be able to remain right on the person. Antique glasses. Eight. I love the effect on the glasses. I like the way that they are sitting here on this translucent table. Um, I like the, um, the the faded background, but then it starts to get a little bit um, distracting when there's a lot of it going on here. Again, I want to be able to stay concentrated kind of on this original image here because it just leads me right through all of these glassware here. I like kind of a little bit of the outlines here, but I probably would have simplified the rest of the background. Rough pastel trees. Nine. I love the way the maker has composed this and cropped this into this vertorama. Um, I like the artistic treatment that's been applied. And then we have these kind of warm color tones juxtaposed against the blues. Very well done. Idea. Nine. This is really uh, a, a very interesting way of being able to kind of remove the distractions of everything that's going on in the background. Um, the maker has chosen to kind of have a complete um, artistic effect on all the people in the background and the impact is just amazing. And then has applied lesser effect on the subjects that are kind of coming toward us. We have a lot of action. We have a lot of impact. The only thing I would have done is I would have just cloned that out. Again, you're the artist in this category, um, but I think that this is a, a stellar image. Beyond, beyond the garden gate. <clears throat> Nine, I think this is really well done. It's got a lot of symbolism going on. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is when the maker gets home, try flipping it. So right now we're kind of coming in, we read left to right, we come in, we're at this gate and I wanna go through the gate, but then what's competing with me is do I walk this way down the gate? If you flip this, you'd be coming in at the gate and then walking through the gate and then I think it would be a stronger image. So um, it might be something just the maker entertains. It kind of is like a waning moon versus a waxing moon. Um, it could have a different symbolism, especially since this area here is darker, but this is very creative and very well done. Fire and ice. Seven. I like the kind of the abstract feel. I like the fact that the maker has chosen to be able to juxtapose this fire and kind of create it into this blue. Um, 
the high key in this case kind of overpowers the um, the blue flames a little bit. And then some of these dark areas in here kind of take my eye away. But for an abstract, it's got a lot of intrigue. Kaleidoscope. Eight. Uh, this is a good subject to be able to do an artistic effect like this on. Um, the maker might have just, again, looked at the edges a little bit to be able to see what's at the very edges of the border to be able to improve it. Lighthouse. Seven. So I like um, the fact that we're going kind of from subject to subject and then kind of going out the walkway over to the edge of the lighthouse. There's a little bit of mushiness at the edge of the lighthouse, so be careful when you do apply an artistic effect. But overall, the image seems to be um, just a little bit slanted. This is kind of going off, you know, in this direction here. Um, so either kind of do that really a lot to make it really intentional or straighten it. Lake Windermere, UK, Mosaic. Eight. This image has a lot of impact. I love the repeating patterns. We kind of come in through these boats here. We have these wonderful patterns. We go up here and we have the nice repeating patterns going on. Um, there's a couple of things that I think could be done to improve it. One is there's kind of this line here that makes it seem like it's kind of um, tilted a little bit and sagging. And I think the maker should kind of entertain the idea of kind of cropping it and removing this dark corner over here. But overall, it has great impact, great color tones, and I love the boats. Very well done. Feathers. Seven. So I like the color patterns and the repeating patterns that are going on over here, but the brightest part of the image is kind of the least interesting part is right here. So the maker maybe could, uh, you know, think about either cropping this or composing this a little bit differently or just using the warp tool. If you do edit transform warp, you can kind of just bring that stuff um, kind of down at a diagonal a little bit more. And then again, watch the borders. We have a little bit of a border um, um, issues that are distracting on the bottom left. The Little Clam Diggers. Eight. This has such great storytelling. Uh, with the artistic effect that's applied, we can see that everybody's kind of watching this little boy. The birds are watching, the little girl's watching. Um, it's got a really nice uh, feel to the um, to the image. I also like the fact that the um, boy is not merging with the water um, over here. So it's well done. Street scene, Jewish ghetto, Venice. Eight. I love the patterns that are in here, the laundry, the reflections, um, but there's it's on, a little bit on the dark side. So again, when you apply an effect, you can sometimes either reduce the opacity a little bit or um, lighten it a little bit when you're when you're done with that impact effect. King of the jungle. nine uh, so this is a uh, really nicely done we have these wonderful grasses that are being overlaid we have the effect on the lion itself um i probably would crop a little bit off the top here so that it's not quite so much negative space um this would be good for a kind of a magazine where you got to put a lot of words up there but i think in this case a little bit less negative space of cropping uh, some of that off would enhance it <clears throat> the standout Eight. Um, I love the color palette that's going on here. I love the composition of the sunflowers, the way the maker has kind of led us through the frame here. There's a little bit of mushiness kind of going on where the background kind of meets the sky in this particular case. So perhaps go in there and try to clean that up a little bit. Fire flower. Eight. 
this has a wonderful feel to the image, the colors, the vibrancy, the impact um, that it that it does have, and then kind of this ghostly uh, flower that's kind of underneath this as well. We're really close to the edges though, so um, again, be careful about that border patrol um, to try to kind of not lead your eye um, away. The maker also in this case should consider flipping this. Um, and just to be able to see how it looks with the kind of the lines kind of reading, you know, um, you know, outward and just compare it. Sometimes when you flip it, it'll enhance it. Sometimes um, it, it won't. But in this case, it seems like it'd be worth a try. My masterpiece. Eight. This has a wonderful graphic of appeal to the image. Um, I see a little face that's going on in here. Um, I love the way that the borders have um, kind of led your eye to be able to keep it in the frame. And yet they've got this wonderful kind of folksy feel to the, the scene. Um, I love the red against the, the black as well. Kind of interesting to be able to look at. Stop moving. They will see me. I like the feel of this image as far as the cardinal is against the snow and against the um, the background. The background's nicely uh, kind of not distracting. But then we've got these two other species of birds in here, and especially the uh, the kind of the sparrow that's up at the top is really close to the frame. And then there's a lot of branches, um, perhaps cropping this in and kind of having this be uh, a smaller um, total image would enhance it. Morning light at Font Hill Castle. Nine. I love the composition of this. I love the way that the road kind of leads us right into the castle. I like the artistic effect to it. I would go back and take a look at a couple of things. One is there's a little bit of a yellow here that seems incongruous with the rest. And then there's this pattern down here that almost looks like a, a face. I think if you took those two things out, it would enhance it, but it's great, got great uh, artistic appeal to the image. Agony of defeat. Seven. I like the effect of this. Um, the oil painter on the helmet, I think it's got a, a lot of intrigue and it adds like a three-dimensionality to it. But the brightest part of the scene, again, is kind of at the corners and it's kind of pulling my eye. I want to be able to kind of go in and kind of stay at the face, especially based on the title here. So perhaps go back through and kind of uh, tone this a little bit differently based on your title is telling me as the viewer that the, um, the, the expression is the most important part. All right, we have uh, seven nines. So we can get a first, second, third out of those. Thumbnails here. We have, uh, this is one image. This is another image. Third image. Fourth image. Fifth image. Sixth. And the seventh. All right, this is first, the gate is second. Which, I'm sorry, which one's which? Um, the, uh, the, the cowboy is first. Okay, that's one, one's yep. first. Okay. And the next one is second. Uh, to the left or right? To first the one. right, the gate, yep. Okay. Second. And, oh, that's a tough one. I guess the trees would be third. Trees, okay. Yep. HM, that's one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and I need one more out of 11. <laughs> so here's the thumbnail. All right, no, I got it. It's it's the boats. That boats. Uh, one in the middle. These boats. That one. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So one thing for your club to consider when you're kind of done with a competition year is consider going to half point scores. 
a lot of clubs have done this. So that way, not everything kind of falls in a seven or eight. And then only, you know, the odd one gets a six and the really good ones get a nine. Um, that's why I knew immediately that one would be the one that kind of broke that one. Just something to, for the board to uh, to mull over is uh, nowadays with uh, electronic scoring, we're not you know locked into those keypads and only did like seven, eight, nine. So just something for fodder for a future conversation. All right, we're going to review this contest. You do who do, Melinda Matlock, honorable mention. Congratulations, Melinda. Ghost Rider, Rose Godari, honorable mention. Congratulations, Rose. Lake Windermere Mosaic, John Curzel, honorable mention. Congratulations, John. King of the jun Jungle, Rose Godari, honorable mention. Congratulations, Rose. Morning Light at Fontill Castle, Vicki DeVico, honorable mention. Congratulations, Vicki. Rough Pastel Trees, Stan Pepka, third place. Congratulations, Stan. Beyond the Garden Gate, Vicki DeVico, second place. Congratulations, Vicki. All right, we're going to take a uh, five-minute break here at the church. I will enable anybody who want to speak to each other. They can unmute themselves as soon as I find that setting. You should be able to unmute yourselves now. Okay. Lisa, it was a great idea moving that, flipping my garden gate. <laughs> I'm going to go back and do it and see how it looks. <laughs> so again, you do that border patrol so that you've kind of gone all the way around the frame. I think if the maker had been able to simplify this and just done the one of the uh, the center image, it would have had a much stronger impact. Street scene. Seven. I love the colors in this, um, but it's a little bit on the busy side and the top is a little bit on the bright side as well. Impressionistic great blue. Nine. Uh, this image has a lot of impact. The uh, the feel of the impressionism does work very well here. Um, the maker might try just to be able to um, either reduce the effect on the background just a little bit or darken the background just a little bit by um, in increasing the contrast. But it's got a lot of intrigue. Flower power. Eight. Uh, the color palette is just wonderful with the cool tones juxtaposed against the warm tones. We've got kind of these waxy, uh, you know, pistols and stamen that are going on over here. Um, the very bottom left and the very bottom right are kind of the weaker points of the image, but the rest of the image is very strong. A man and his dog. Nine. Um, this has a great feel to the image. The effect, especially on the hair and the beard, is especially well done. Um, it's got a great storytelling with both the eyes of the dog and the eyes of the man looking at you. The only thing I would suggest maybe is uh, eliminating a few of the color tones. So like the cyan, maybe if that had been desaturated a little bit, it would have allowed you to be able to kind of stay stronger on the two uh, subjects in the center. Under the palm tree path. Eight. This has a very whimsical feel to the image. Um, I love the palm tree. I love the uh, the effect of the, uh, the the lights coming down from the top, and then the spiral that's going on over here. Um, I would probably crop this, you know, like right at the edge of um this wonderful sphere, and get rid of the trees over on the right hand side because the rest of this, if we kind of uh, look over there is much, uh, much stronger as far as impact to the viewer. 
What's your score? Eight. Yes. Ah, thanks. Seven. I like the treatment that's been done to kind of simplify all of uh, what's going on in this scene. Um, but there's um, a lot of lot going on. It's a very busy uh, scene. Um, we also have some lines that aren't straight leading kind of from that first uh, uh, building, uh, kind of leaning a little bit to the end of it, leaning a bit. Of, and then again, we have kind of these bright spots that kind of just distract us a little bit. Alson Norway oil painting. Nine. Uh, this is extremely uh, well done. The sky and the water kind of complement each other. We're led uh, kind of from this dominant red building all the way through to the back and then all the way up into the, uh, the right hand side. Um, very well done. Wine. Seven. Um, I like the um, the the wine glass and the wine bottle. So what we got away going on here? This wonderful glass. This and then we kind of come up. Um, but then my kind of distracted by the door that's going on over here, the window that's at the edge, the bright color that's over here. I think if the maker just kind of simplified it and perhaps kind of cropped uh, right here and right at the edge of this glass here, it would be a stronger scene. The eyes have it. Eight. Very unusual uh, picture. Um, I do like the eyes that are going on in here. I like the impact on the center of the uh, the image, the subject in the image. Um, the extra little point like down there, like just kind of crop the bottom of that off rather than have that go uh, out of character. Electrifying. Eight. Uh, this has a, a great uh, feel to the image. I like the color palette that's going on. Um, I like all the radiating spokes that's going um, out as well. That center um, piece is a little bit on the overexposed side. So perhaps um, being able to uh, tone that down a little bit would improve, but it's it's got an interesting uh, effect on kind of a more ordinary subject, making it look very unique. Creepy clown. Eight. Um, definitely is a creepy clown. Um, the um, the effect, the color palette is very bright. Um, perhaps toning down the whites just a little bit. And then there's this dark area that's underneath the chin in this category here. Uh, you can definitely be able to fill that in. All right, we have a three nine. So you need first, second, third. I'll bring up the thumbnails. Of this image, the dog image, and this image. So this is first, the dog is second, and the great blue heron is third. First, second, <coughs> third. All right, and I have um, six eights. I need three. So this is one, two, three, four. This is one. Now go back one. The eyes have it. Is the it? eyes have it. Yep, that's an honorable mention. Go back one. The back one. The palm tree. That one. And then the first one. Palm tree. And this one. Yes. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> All right, we'll review this contest and then uh, I'll put together the best to show for you to pick.
Gates to the Valley, Joe Gilchrist, honorable mention. Congratulations, Joe. Under the Palm Tree Path, J.C. Roy, honorable mention. Congratulations, J.C. The Eyes Have It, Lynn Padley, honorable mention. Impressionistic Great Blue, Lynn Padley, third place. A Man and His Dog, Deborah Aniano, second place. Congratulations, Debbie. All right, I'm gonna to put together the best of show and then you have to pick which one that is. All right, here comes the uh, best of show. You have three images to pick from. I will go through them all and study them however you'd like. And I can go back through them again if you want. So you have this image, this image, or this image. Ooh. The cowboy. This one here? Yes. All right. And now we'll review this contest. Alson Norway Oil Painting, Linda DeAngelis. Linda, do you want to tell us about it? Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we took a cruise to Norway in October and the colors in these um, houses were just so interesting. They guess they'd all been built after 1904. There was a fire and burnt everything down. And so all the, the buildings were of the same general kind of um, art deco um, feel. So, and they, um, we had a lot of rain, so the I did change the, the sky. The sky was just kind of a dull gray, and I added the interesting skies because it just fit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did it in um, Nick filters, and it was oil painting. Lighthouse and Film, Wayne Baruch. Congratulations, Wayne. Let me find Wayne and I'll be here. I don't think Wayne is on. Yeah, Wayne's not on, actually. Congratulations, Wayne. Giddy up, Matthew Rank. Best to show. Congratulations, Matt. Want to tell us about it? Thank you. This was taken down in uh, Cowtown. Uh, 
basically the sun was setting. So obviously we got the sun set color in the background. Uh, I brought this into Topaz and basically picked one of the uh, water coloring with the brushes or the painting with the brushes and just changed to different brushes till I found something that I liked. And uh, I liked that it blurred the people out in the background more than they were already blurred. My image, I cropped it down quite a bit to get rid of some artifacts and things. This is what I turned out with. It's wonderful. Very nice. Thank you. Lisa, thank you so much. You're welcome. For your comments. You have a lot of good image makers in here. Anybody can unmute themselves again. Matt, is that you riding the horse? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. Thank Congrats, you. Matt. It's a good picture. Congratulations, everybody. All the pictures that were be were beautiful. Lisa, great Thank job. You. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, this was an interesting competition. Yes. It was fun. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. Lynn. Good night. Thanks again, Lisa. Good night, everybody. Uh, we'll send out an email about next month's meeting, see who's coming, because we need a head count uh, for the in person portion of our meeting. Oh. Lisa, I'm going to be in touch with you for another club I'm in. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yep, I'd be happy to. Good night, everybody.